guys back with another video if you couldn't tell from the title it is a plug play video yet again but we're going to be going over some of the comics and mangas that i've acquired throughout this year and last year if you guys haven't been following me in the vlogs i've just been purchasing you know random mangas and comics you know just for a rainy day i'm gonna be honest with you i haven't really been reading any of these i've just been you know editing and working on videos and stuff lately and it's more for like a rainy day maybe when the internet's out or maybe when i use it to go number two who knows i don't know but yes before we start anything let's take a hit of the plug plate Oof. should we do a blinker We'll wait, we'll do another small hit. <coughs> yeah, probably not. We're probably not gonna do a blinker <coughs> for this video. <coughs> Ooh, that was good. All right, so let's go uh, through with the collection. So first off we got is Devil's Line. I don't, I don't know, it just looked like an interesting, I like kind of like skimmed through some of the, the pages and stuff and it looked pretty interesting, you know. Let's just read the back though. Sukasa, a college student is rescued from an attack by a devil. I think this one's a vampire one, yeah. One of many vampires that can blend in among the human population, Anzai. Her savior is a half devil who exploits his natural gifts, his supernatural gifts as a member of a shadowy police task force that specializes in devil related crime in Tokyo. As Anzai continues to keep guard over Tsukasa, the two quickly forge a tentative bond, one that Anzai fears will test his ironclad rule of never drinking human blood. Okay, so I lied. I did read somewhat, a little bit of this, maybe like two or three pages. And the main character, yeah, he works for the some like vampire cop shit because he's like a vampire, but he suppresses it, and uh, that's about all I read. But yeah, um, I would like to mention when I did buy this at Barnes and Nobles, the girl at the cashier was like, "This was pretty good," uh, but the ending sucks. So yeah, and we got the Watchmen in the DC Doomsday Edition, as you can see right here. here. We got Superman and Dr. Manhattan in the back. Let's just read this. So this is like apparently uh, when the universes collide or some shit. Uh, this is, let's just read a review. With Doomsday Clock, John Johns appears to be using the DC Universe to hold up a mirror right back at Watchmen and in doing so, maybe even defend, maybe even defend the genres aspirational optimistic core whatever the fuck that means the world of watchmen collides with the dc universe in a story that rewrites the past present and future of comics dr manhattan a near omnipotent being from the watchmen universe has been using his powers to rewrite the dc universe reshaping some heroes histories erasing all uh, erasing other heroes altogether and playing with the fates of the good and evil alike but why why does a godlike being from another world stand to gain from uh, the DC Universe. The mystery remains, but now our heroes know they're being toyed with what they can do to stop it, or what can they do to stop it. Time is ticking. And so, so this collection includes the full groundbreaking 12 issue miniseries. There's some, let's just get some uh, random, random uh, stuff in here, just to see. Really nice artwork. really interesting <laughs> this is Levius or some shit I bought this recently as well with that vampire shit and uh, I haven't tried this or I haven't read any of this yet so uh, but we can read the back let's just show you the back right here before I read it looks like some martial arts shit it's the 19th century and the world has entered the era of rebirth recovering from the devastating flames of war the sport of mechanical martial arts have galvanized the nations cybernetically augmented fighters turn their blood into steam and their bodies into brutal fighting and killing machines. Young Levius is one of those arena battlers hell-bent on winning so he can simply survive. 
Having fought his way into the top grade of mechanical martial arts, that's an MMA, that's funny. Levius faces an ever-changing world that grows more threatening by the day. The shadowy mega corporation Amethyst wields its military might across the world through its advances in the arena. Can Levius be the fighter who changes the course of the world's fate? You feel me? Let's just show you some random stuff from here. I haven't read this, like I said, so. Sounds interesting. I probably should have read that before I bought it. The back. But I just thought the artwork looked, you know, like a typical shonen where they, you know, you know. Or shonen's like a uh, type of magazine with age group or something, right? I don't know. And then we got this one, the Regina something. Regina Crimson. I only bought this because there's Square Enix in the back right here. So it was made by them. Uh, I don't know if I read this. I think this is about dragons. Let's read it. <clears throat> in this action-packed dark fantasy, humanity lives under the threat of annihilation by immensely powerful dragons. The dragon hunter Ragna embarks on a revenge-filled quest to eliminate the threat once and for all. Dragon hunters, warriors armed with silver, special silver weapons who kill their prey for bounty. Lowest among their ranks is Ragna, who forms an improbable partnership with the young genius Leonica, Leonica, a master dragon slayer with more kills to her name than almost any other. All Ragna wants is to stay by Leonica's side, but his dream is shattered by an attack from the deadliest dragon imaginable. And then I guess that's the Hami. All suited up. Let's just see some of the artwork. Why are we going the wrong way? I think. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, it's showing some good stuff. Alright. Uh, then we got Marvel's Generations. So, I think this one is. I honestly don't know. I think I bought this at Stockton Con. So here's the back. I think this is like. I think I read this uh, a little bit of this, and this is like where they show like the new generation of. Uh, I think it was the Hulk. Yeah, see, they have the Hulk in this one, and they have the new Hulk, and he's uh, a Korean dude, and his name is Amadeus Cho, and apparently he can actually control, you know, that that gene or whatever, that mutant or not mutant, that gamma radiation shit. But he's not as strong as Bruce Banner, apparently. But yeah, they apparently write about, uh, there's like 12 stories or some shit? Let me see. The heroes of today and the legends that inspired them. They survived their greatest trial. Now 10 of the Earth's most promising champions receive their unique rewards. Set loose from the shackles of time, they will come face to face with the icons in whose giant footsteps they follow. And powerful lessons will be learned. Join the genius Amadeus Cho, the telepathic Jean Grey, the claw mutant Laura Kinney, the Mjolnir wielding Jane Foster, the Marks woman Kate Bishop, the armored Riri Williams, the mighty Carol Danvers, the shape shifting sensational Kamala Khan, the wall crawling Miles Morales, and the shield slinging Sam Wilson as they enter the vanishing point. See, yeah, I think it's uh, all these superheroes and uh, they're upgraded, not upgraded, but like their successors. Pretty interesting. We got Eternals. I bought this after the movie or before the movie. Either before or after. Uh, A, because um, I wanted to catch up and know about the Eternals uh, before the movie. And then B, because the movie sucked ass. So I bought this to know the real story. So, uh, yeah. There's the back right there. Let's just read the back. In ancient times, the cosmic giants called the Celestials created a race of powerful immortal beings, the Eternals. They eventually disappeared, but now the Eternals have returned, and so have the Celestials. A golden massive figure towers over San Francisco, standing in silent judgment. But does he portend the end of the world as the Eternals discover the nature of the threat heading to the Earth? Uh, packs are broken, lines are drawn, and eternal blood will flow. But can the fractured family pull together in time to save the planet from the horde? Let's just show you some of this stuff right here. Right 
Definitely gonna read these someday, eventually. We got the Dark Multiverse. We're gonna speed things up. We're just gonna read the back. Not show you. I don't know if I'm really showing you any good, like, you know, pages anyways. It's just random. So we're just gonna read the back. So this one is five stories. Nightfall, the death of Spider, uh, the death of Superman, Blackest Night, the Judas Contract, and Infinite Crisis. The most memorable moments from DC celebrated history reimagined for a dark, new, a dark new world. The dark multiverse is where everything you fear, every dire possibility lives, lives in its own reality. Here, the pivotal event that shaped the DC universe play out along different, more sinister lines in the follow darker, more twisted paths. As witnessed by the Tempest Fuginot, the immortal sentry who stands watch as at the barrier between universes, these eerily evocative tales reveal the final destination of the roads uh, not taken and the grim faces of those who choose to follow them. It's called, but it has like the Avengers on there, I guess. And then right here. Let's take a hit real quick. In the wake of Professor X's funeral, Captain America creates a new Avengers unit comprised. Uh, composed of Avengers and the X-Men's humans and mutants working together, but the Red Skull has returned straight out of the 1940s, and he wants to destroy all mutants. What a grief, what a gruesome weapon has given him, what gruesome weapon has given him dangerous new powers? Rogue and Scarlet, which face off against the Red Skull's S-Men. Wolverine and Captain America investigate the worldwide mutant assassination epidemic, and Havoc and Thor battle the spreading influence of Honest John, the living propaganda. And when an Avenger defects, the rest must face the terrible might of the Omega Skull. Plus Wonder Man, Wonder Man, Wasp, and Sunfire join the team. Just in time for the Green Reaper's Revenge, Uncanny Avengers Assemble. Wonder Man? I didn't even know that was a... What the fuck? Uh, what is this? This one's pretty dope. I don't know what this is. But it has Batman and Superman on it. No back. I mean, no, no thing to read on the back. Let's just see. Is there anything? Let's just show you some of the. I guess. Since there's nothing to read. Suicide Squad. Yes, sir. I think that's the Peacekeeper right there. Peacemaker? Or Peacekeeper. I'm playing too much Apex. Let's see. Is that him? Alright. The future is dark. A glimpse into the dark future of the DC Universe reveals dark stories filled with dark turns, darker actions, and dark possibilities for heroes and villains alike. The future of the Suicide Squad sees the clandestine. clandestine team hunting its former leader, Amanda Waller, on Earth-3. The once young, optimistic Teen Titans face some of their former students of Titans Academy as the team, as they team with Red X for one last chance at redemption. Picking up on those events, Shazam hides a mysterious secret he's held since his time at Titans Academy while trying to do while trying to undo a literal deal with the devil even further in the future, the world sits cold and dead with a few survivors braving its barren wastelands. Can a new Swamp Thing help humanity regain a foothold or will he extinguish the last flames of hope? And in the 853rd century, Black Adam rules a peaceful planet Kandak until reality itself is threatened by a menace tying backs of the Teen Titans and their failures in the 21st century. Damn, 853rd century? What the fuck? I think this is the older story of uh, Eternals, I believe. And I bought this one too. You can see the back right here. Alright. Let's just read this. 
More than 35 years ago, comic legends Jack King Kirby returned to the house of ideas with perhaps his biggest idea of all time, the universe of Eternals. The creation was the result of Kirby's ceaseless curiosity with the origin of man and his mythologies, but like many of King's concepts, it was definitely ahead of its time. Flash forward to 2006, superstar creators Neil Gaiman and John Romita Jr. have boldly taken on these concepts with a loving hand in the process of telling a fresh cackling, fresh and crackling fun yarn full of mystery, suspense, and majestic power, all with an eye on helping establish Kirby's creation as a vital part of Marvel of the Marvel Universe and once and for all. Against the backdrop of Marvel's Civil War, the Eternals are emerging one by one from a strange waking dream at once at once coming to terms with the fact that they are far more than the normal people they thought themselves to be. They find there is little time to commiserate about things. However, as they are thrust into life and death struggle that spans both time and space. Hey, what a read. And then we got an old Guardians of the Galaxy. Really enjoyed the movie, so, you know, I had to read it. But yeah. As you can see, just by the artwork, it looks, you know, like hella old. Let's read this. Thrill at the exploits of the 31st century's greatest heroes, the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Joint telekinetic, Vance Astro, Alien, Archer, Yondu, Flame-haired, Mercurian, Nikki, Super Strong, Jovian, Charlie, 27, Crystalline, Plutonian, Martinex, and the mysterious Starhawk and his... Who are these people? I don't even know. Uh, and his wife Alita as they undertake a quest to find the long lost shield of Captain America, a mission that pits them against Iron Man's twisted legacy, the marauding alien cyborgs called, called the Stark, and the intergalactic thieves known as the Force. As Force Plus, the Guardians confront the Devil's Daughter Malevolence and battle across alongside the Fantastic Four Silver Surfer Doctor Strange, Dargo Katar, the 20th century, 26th century Thor against the mad god known as Korvac. What the fuck? Man, these are old. Alright, I think it's uh, pretty fitting to end it with uh, Berserk. We got this. Look at this. This is just like a Bible. Look how thick it is. There's nothing to read on the back. Let's just, let's just show this. But RIP to the man, you know what I mean? I just found out that they are going to, uh, you know, continue on with this series with his assistance, and uh, they're going to do it justice, you know. Um, but yeah, all right, peace to the man. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm a big Berserk fan. I honestly never read it, but I heard many good things, and you know, I've seen it at the Amazon bookstore before they closed, and I figured I'd buy it because it was only like it was like. It was only like, what, like 20 bucks, because uh, it was like half off or some shit. Originally, it's supposed to be 50, it says right here. But yeah, um, I think I'm going to end it with a hit, not a blinker. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's a lot longer than I intended. Cheers, guys. Peace out.